that event will be yeah thank you so we welcome you all for this sdp on chem collective way lab which is a joint initiative of the developed department of chemistry hirodimal college university of delhi under the dbt star college scheme and spoken tutorial iit bombay this chem collective we lab is an online simulation of chemistry lab with 14 modules and is a self learning course it is specifically designed to assist students by linking chemical computation with authentic lab chemistry these simulation based exercises provide new modern ways of teaching learning and motivation various interactive sessions exercises allow students to discover and help to reinforce their fundamental concepts by learning basic lab techniques in virtual mode most most importantly to maintain consistency and to evaluate your progress we will be giving you quizzes and assignments on a daily basis the quizzes will be objective type questions based on three modules at a time the complete schedule is attached to and it has been mailed to everyone important note for participants is that uh, please ensure you have laptop or desktop with you with the good internet connection you participate actively in the entire session attend all the sessions duly submit all the assignments or quizzes and uh, most importantly the certificate will be issued by spoken tutorial iit bombay to only those participants who attend the program with minimum 80% attendance and score minimum 60% marks in the evaluation and an objective quiz based assessment to all participants will be done upon completion of the sdp so with this i welcome everyone and uh, i invite professor anita kamra to uh, take up the session further thank you thank you very much dr sumi good afternoon sir ki bakshi sir who is with cpdm university our chief guest the keynote speaker of today principal ma'am my very dear colleagues and i am here as the dbt star program coordinator of dbt star which has been running in the college for the past 3 years and the basic objective of dbt star is to strengthen the academic and physical infrastructure in achieving excellence in teaching and training one of its objectives is to enhance the quality of learning and the teaching process to stimulate original thinking it could be hands on exposure it could be anything so dbt star college scheme was initiated by the department of bio technology in 2008 hirojimal college has initiated its program in 2018 So 19, 20, 20 till 21. This is our uh, third year running. We have done over 100 activities, ranging from popular lecture series by the National Academy of Sciences, FDP on very good subjects, environmental audit, CRISPR class, other genetic engineering, and also an international conference on nanomedicine. Today we have gathered here for a five-day student development program. which they call as the sdp chem collective v labs in association with spoken tutorials iit bombay and this is organized by department of chemistry under the aegis of dbt star college scheme this is yet another feather in the cap in the string of activities that kirodimal college has like uh, ram uh, ram sunil just explained the virtual lab is an online stimulation of chemistry lab it is designed to help the students link chemistry computations with authentic laboratory chemicals so that means the lab will allow the student to select from hundreds of standard reagents whether they are aqueous or not they can ma manipulate them in a manner as they would be doing it in a real lab i hope we all hope that this new concept will augment critical thinking in our students which is ex in this extremely difficult pandemic scenario which we are facing currently I am Ram Sunil, the convener of Chemistry Society, or and the Department of Chemistry. Dr. Geeta Anjali, who is the co-convener, and the students, the very best for the program. Also, I would like to mention 
that the constant support of our principal ma'am, Professor Vibha Singh Chauhan, cannot be explained in words. She is always encouraging and trying to help us innovate, create, and be with us whenever we ask. And my subject coordinators, Professor Reena. Unfortunately, Reena has just suffered a tragedy. She has lost her mom, mother, and is unable to join us. Renu, who is the subject coordinator for botany. Dr. Sangeeta Gadre, who is the coordinator for physics. They all have been my pillars for running the DVT Star College team successfully for the third year. With this, thank you very much for inviting me. And I wish you the best. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much for your uh, enlightening words. Yeah. yeah, I hope I am audible. No. Very faintly. Oh, my God. <clears throat> yeah. So uh, uh, let me try. That is so. IIT class already. <laughs> Daksh Meena, just mute yourself. No, uh, Yeah, my, my mic seems is not that appropriate, not, uh, not working properly. I hope, am I audible now? Yeah, yeah, now we can hear you. Yeah, Please. so I removed that uh, microphone. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, uh, since Principal Ma'am has some preoccupied uh, uh, task for the time, so she told me that she won't be available right now. And, but she has blessed us for the com uh, completion of this event. I would request Dr. Gitanjali, co-convener of the seminar committee, to go ahead with the session. Thank you. Thank you, Sunil. A very good afternoon to sir, all my dear colleagues, madam, and my dear students. It is always a pleasure and rather it's an honor to introduce sir, because sir is my teacher, guru. He used to teach me in MSc statistical thermodynamics. I still remember his classes, so attractive, so useful. So it is my honor to introduce Sir. Sir is a founding vice chancellor of PDM University, Bahadurgar, Haryana. He has been executive director of Tertiary Education Commission Tech, Mauritius, during October 2013 to February 2015. He was selected for this prestigious position through an international selection prior to joining Tech. Sir has been Vice Chancellor of UP Rajshri Tandon Open University, Allahabad, for more than two years. It was 2011 and 13. Sir held the prestigious Sir Shankarlal Chair of Chemistry in the University of Delhi for more than two decades and was also Head Department of Chemistry, University of Delhi during May 10. 2010 to August 2011. Sir is a visiting professor at Guru Govind Singh IP University, Delhi during 2007. Sir served as a director of IEEE, that is Institute of Lifelong Learning, CPDHE, Center for Professional Development in Higher Education, University of Delhi during 2008 to 2010. Sir presently is a chairman of National Resource Center of Chemistry, NRCC of the MHRD, Guru Angadev Teaching Learning Center of the MHRD and Center for E-Learning. All the three centers are located at SGTB Khalsa College, University of Delhi. Sir is a member of standing committee of the National Mission on Education through ICT of Government of India, 2009 to 2011. Sir is a chairman of National Science Digi uh, Digital Library project of the CSIR in both chemistry and polymer sciences, 2005 to 6. He was also the chairman of, uh, chairman of the content advisory committee for the chemistry for Sakshat portal of the MHRT government of India. Sir is a go double gold medalist and PhD from Delhi University. He did his postdoctoral training at the University of Erlangen, Nuremberg, Germany with Professor J. Ladik and at Koyoto University and Institute of Fundamental Chemistry, Koyoto, Japan, with Professor K. Fukai, the Nobel laureate, and Professor T. Vaimbe. Sir has been a visiting scientist at TIFR, that is Tata Institute of Fundamental Research, Mumbai, in 1989 to 1991, and Indian Institute of Science, ISC Bangalore, 1987 and 1992. 
Sir's re research interests include theoretical polymer chemistry with special reference to electrically conducting polymers and biopolymers. Sir is the author, co-author of more than 180 research papers. One author and co-author, 51 e-books, books as editor, chairman, convener of the working group, and 63 e-modules as author, co-author for PG chemistry courses and ARPIT programs of the MHRD. Many students have obtained their PhD MPhil under his guidance. Sir had various research projects from CSIR, UGC, DAE, and DST. And Sir's other interests include innovation in science education, ICT in higher education, e-learning, and MOOCs. Sir is a member of National Writing Team for Chemistry Class 9th and 12th books of NCRT from 2001 to 2003. Sir is also a recipient of several awards, and some of them are His Excellence Education He Award 2021, International Public Figure Award 2020, Achari Chanakke Shiksha with Samman 2020, World Education Award 2017, Haryana Ratan Award 2016, Bharat Jyoti Award 2016, India Didactic Association IDA Special Award for Excellence in Digital Content in Education 2015, National Education Award by News Channel Headlines Today 2012, Biot Wandering Fellowship 2012, Professor Ramdas Tiwari Memorial Lecture 2012, Dr. R. D. Desai Award of the Indian Chemical Society 2009, Professor P. K. Bose Memorial Award of the Indian Chemical Society 2008, Fellowship of the IOPIC 2006, Member of the World Bank Team for Kabul University 2006, Distinguished Teacher Award 2000, Chemical Research Society of India Medal 2000, Fellowship of the National Academy of Sciences FNASC. 1997, JSPS Fellowship of Japan, 1995, CSIR Visiting Associateship, 1991, INSA Research Fellowship, 1990, UGC Career Award, 1989, Best Paper Award in the Field of Chemical Sciences from DART, 1986, DART Fellowship of Germany, 1984, Young Scientist Award, 1983, Dr. Krishnarao Gold Medal, 1978, Professor R.P. Mitra Gold Medal, 1973. And the list is very long. If I will keep on reading, it will take another one hour. Sir was also facilitated two times, September 2009 and December 2011 for distinct and outstanding contribution to education, including e-transformation e of the University of Delhi by the former president of India, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. Professor, sir, is elected as a pre uh, president of the section of chemical sciences of Indian Science Congress Association, that is ISCA for the year 2011 and 12. Sir is a member of various editorial boards like Indian Journal of Chemistry, Journal of Scientific and Industrial Research, and Chief Editor of UGC-sponsored General Chemistry Education Review. Besides this, Sir is also a member of various professional and academic bodies like MHRD, UGC, NAC, DST, CBSC, NCRT, and so on. Last but not the least, Sir is also Distinction of being one of the most, uh, one of the first person from the university mm -hmm. to have been selected as a member scientist of the third Indian research expedition to Antarctica in 1984. With this, I request, sir, to please uh, enlighten our students, sir, so that at least they also understand what they are uh, losing or uh, what they are not able to get. Thank you, sir, you are most welcome to please. Thank you, Gitanjali, for your very elaborate introduction. I think it was all not required. Anyway, thanks a lot. And good afternoon, everybody. Esteemed Professor Vibhai Chauhan, principal of the college in absentia, program coordinator, Professor Anita Kamra Verma, 
professor reena satena she is the coordinator chemistry under the dbt star college scheme also in absentia mm -hmm. mr chetra itesh gawade training coordinator from iit mumbai mr ram sunil ji convener seminar committee of the department of chemistry dr gitanjali co convener teacher in charge dr prithvi palesh jyoti das faculty members from the college as well as from other institutions and last but not the least dear student from various institutions especially from karodi mal college and i am told that the students are from ug level pg level and even research level also it's a need a great honor and a privilege to have got this opportunity to deliver this keynote address at this space student development program which is being organized by the department of chemistry of crodible college under the aegis of dbt star college scheme in collaboration with spoken tutorial of iit mumbai on a very very important topic that is chem collective v labs i thank the organizer for inviting me to deliver this talk as a matter of fact when i was asked to deliver this talk there were many options open to me i have been working in e transformation then e learning moocs and you know virtual lab is also a manifestation of use of technology in education but then i thought that this is a very rare occasion and we have majority of young students sitting there so let me speak on a broader topic and let it also be a little motivational talk for the students keeping all these things in mind i have decided to speak on digital transformation in chemistry education in india challenges and opportunities so let me start my talk and before i do that let me share my screen I hope my screen is visible and I am audible. Please confirm it. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank sir, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, as you can see, the title of my this talk is "Digital Transformation in Chemistry Education in India: Challenges and Opportunities." My this talk has been. plan in this way it is in five parts first i will talk about what we mean by digital transformation and why there is a need for it then in part second i will talk about what is the impact of ict on chemistry education in the country then i will talk about what is going to be the future of digital transformation in part 4 i shall speak on the roles of the teachers in this information age and lastly in part 5 i will share some of very useful tips for students 
as to how they can excel in such a scenario so this is how the talk has been planned so coming to the part 1 what is digital transformation and why there is a need for it you know we all know about the digital india initiative of the government of india this initiative started in july 2015 and now in the last more than 6 years kindly mute yourself kindly mute yourself aap mute kar dijiye apni taraf se and you know the vision of digital india initiative is to transform india into a digitally empowered society so that's what i am going to talk about now the first question which comes is what do we mean by digital transformation digital transformation in chemistry education means the transformation brought about in chemistry education as a result of the integration of technology with it so it's basically the result of technology that we get digital transformation you know we are living in the 21st century and let me tell you it's very difficult to imagine education without technology in the 21st century almost impossible and if you look at the new education policy there it is very clearly mentioned that the relationship between technology and education at all levels is bidirectional bidirectional means technology enhances the quality of education and enhanced quality of education then further improves the technology so they feed on each other now technology which we commonly use for all these purposes is ICT information and communication technology you know what is ict ict is an umbrella term that encompasses all communication technologies that provide access to information look at this internet wireless network satellite communication cell phone digital tv all come under ict ICT as it is written here processes information and aids communication please excuse me if i am talking at a very elementary level because we have a very heterogeneous group so i want to take everybody along with me look at how internet has changed our life this is what happens in one internet minute just imagine facebook has 1.4 million scrolling 21.1 million messages are sent in one minute even youtube 500 hours of content is uploaded in one minute this is just one thing i am telling you look at this this entire is what happens using internet in one minute so you can very well imagine how much we are dependent on technology and the question comes why do we do digital transformation in education it helps us on four fronts it helps in improving the access that we are able to reach to more people it helps in enhancing the quality of education and then in imparting education with equity and lastly it also helps in overcoming the problem of shortage of competent faculty and infrastructure so technology helps on all these four fronts having said that i will also like to tell my all young students what a student needs for success in the 21st century you know please keep these things in mind we are living in an information age 
and challenges of this information age are many but there are three major challenges one is that this is an age of uncertainty you know it said that present day school students by the time they finish their education they do not know in which jobs they will be placed uncertainty is there then this is and a oh, of... this is an age of artificial intelligence you know this is an age where artificial intelligence is going to be the intelligence of the students by the time they finish their education so if we can have machines with the same intelligence as you why do we need you that is another challenge and the third challenge is that massification is taking place in higher education more and more enrollments so whatsoever few jobs will be left there will be many takers competition will be very very tough so these are going to be the three major challenges in this information age so now the question comes in such a scenario how do you succeed you know in 21st century if you have to succeed you need two things one is rigorous academic content you have to be academically very very sound and second is you need 21st century skills these two taken together will lead you to deeper learning what are these 21st century skills these are a set of abilities that students need to develop in order to succeed in this information you know you may be in any level ug pg please keep these things in mind these are the things you will be needing and what are these 21st century skills 21st century skills normally come under these three headings one is the learning skill here comes critical thinking creativity collaboration and communication that is four c you don't have to know what is the meaning of critical thinking you have to become critical thinking you have to become creative then literacy skills are very important you need to have information literacy media literacy and technology literacy imt and then you also need life skills flexibility leadership quality initiative productivity and social skills flip so you can very well see these are the skills which are going to be the deciding factor in the years to come and you know you should remember that these skills cannot be acquired in one day you have to you know these have to be nurtured in you and why they are so important because you cannot have machines with these skills so if you have these skills you can outsmart machine so that is going to be a very very important thing now having told you about what is digital transformation why do we need and what all we need for success i come to part second and that is how ict has impacted chemistry education in the country as a matter of fact ict has impacted all areas of chemistry education it won't be wrong if i say it has impacted all areas of higher education not only chemistry physics botany zoology everywhere this is where ict or digital transformation has changed the scenario it has changed the way teaching learning is done e learning and moocs are coming then it has changed the way practical curriculum is executed experimental work is done that is where come virtual labs which you are going to study here then 
it helps you in revising the syllabi it helps you in research through electronic databases it helps you in examination or assessment it helps you in the training of the teachers professional development of the teachers and also it has given you new pedagogies new ways of teaching so this is the most important slide which tells you how digital transformation has taken place in all these seven facets of chemistry education in this development program you are only focusing on one facet that is virtual lab but i am giving you in my this keynote address overview of all including of course virtual lab you know why this is important why this digital transformation because you know it is said that in india the biggest problem is our students are of the 21st century but the topics and the course which we generally teach them is of 19th century courses architecture is of the 19th century methods of teaching is of almost 20th century and method of assessment or examination is also of 20th century so there is a mismatch we have not changed with the changing times and that's a very serious drawback in our system now i come to each one of them one by one let's look at ict in teaching and learning and here digital transformation gives rise to e learning and moocs you all know that e learning basically means electronic learning focus is still on learning only the mechanism has changed and moocs you know are massive open online courses all these courses have become uh. very very popular all over the country as a matter of fact all over the world why moocs have become so popular you know basic philosophy of moocs is four a's any time anywhere any one any number of times whenever you want you can learn from the moocs they are highly economical one can decide one's own pace of learning they have totally changed the face of education but please remember moocs are very difficult to develop to create you know i had a center we have created almost 50 moocs maximum in the country by any institution so we have seen how challenging it is to develop moocs but moocs are going to change the face of education and you all know that all the moocs which are developed in the country they are ultimately hosted on a swine platform you can go to this site and all the moocs are available swine is something like a learning management system at present there are more than 2000 courses on swine platform for chemistry for msc chemistry we have developed so many courses you know the vision is that swine is going to be something like atl any time learning for moocs just as we have atm for money so that's how the picture is and swine is one platform which has been designed to achieve the three cardinal principles of education policy what are those principles access equity and quality because you know it's the government of india's initiative so we help in achieving these three principle you know how it helps look at this if you look at the current higher education scenario in india india has the third largest system of education in the world in 2019 we had a gross enrollment ratio of 26.3% that means in the age group of 18 to 23 26.3% youth were able to come still this is not much that is almost 74% could not get higher education but now new education policy says the target of gross enrollment ratio is 50% by 2035 how will we do that if we open more universities appoint more teachers 
one will need 3.3 million more teachers, keeping a teacher student ratio to be one is to 15. But that may not be possible. So here, MOOC can help you. MOOC can help you in increasing the gross enrollment ratio. This is going to be a big, big thing. Then, you know, MOOCs have been developed by some of the top people in the country. It is something like the best of the country addressing the rest. You know, there are many people who are very fond of learning. It helps them realize the dream of their lifelong learning. For example, I am a, a student of chemistry, but if I want to learn international relation, I can enroll in the MOOC. I want to learn economics, I can learn. So it helps me. And then high quality education will be available to the masses through e-learning and MOOCs. And then this education is offered with equity, not equality. Equity you can see on the right hand side. We have to be fair. And then it makes learning learner centric and interactive and just one click away. That is the beauty of MOOCs. And now the government has already said that any student can enroll in up to 40% of the courses per semester through MOOCs on SWIM and earn credits. So this big facility is available to all the students now. Just see how the things have changed. This is all a result of digital transformation. This was my article in Education Times on Swine platform as to how the things will change. But uh, this is in very brief, I have told you. Then, you know, ICT also helps you in the revision of chemistry syllabi. You know, knowledge in chemistry is growing very, very fast. So fast that the doubling time of the growth of chemistry knowledge has shrunk considerably. There was a time when knowledge was getting doubled in 150 years, but now it has come down to 73 days. So you can very well imagine how quickly we are getting and becoming outdated. What we know in any discipline is just a drop, and what we do not know is just an ocean. So knowledge is growing very fast. Just some example I want to give. You know, chemists are the people who produce new substances in the laboratory. So there is an exponential growth in the number of chemical substances. In the year 1800, we had some hundreds of chemical substances. Now this number is increasing and by the end of this century, we will have 5 billion chemical substance. Then number of elements in the periodic table has increased from 63 in 1869 to 118. Another thing you can very well imagine. These are the new elements. And then on instrumentation front also, many new instruments have come. And then many new concepts theories and ideas are emerging on the chemistry scene. So all this is because of the growth of chemistry knowledge. You know, earlier we used to talk about physical, organic, inorganic, analytical, etc. But now many new sub-disciplines of chemistry have come. Therefore, you know, there is a need to revise syllabi more frequently so as to keep our students updated. So here again, technology can help. Technology, ICT can provide a platform for the periodic revision of syllabi through email, discussion forum, video conferencing, etc. So this is how it can change. Then the next thing which I want to tell you is that ICT has also changed the way the research is conducted. Because knowledge is growing very, very fast. Literature is becoming very vast. Therefore, the research in frontier areas is becoming more and more challenging. And therefore, ICT helps. You know, if you want to do research, you have to do literature survey. So if you can't get all the journals, how to do that? So here also technology helps. Electronic databases are now coming. 
they are becoming the real information source in the 21st century. You know, an electronic database is like a telephone directory. You don't need to remember everything. You know how to find out any number. And you know, the way the things are changing, in future, we may not have physical journals. Everything will be online. So this is another important manifestation of digital transformation. ICT is also changing the way examinations are conducted. You know, online examination has become very, very common. I remember when I was director IEEL long back, I think it was in 2009, we conducted the first online examination in the history of Delhi University. But now it's a routine thing. Online examination gives immediate results, saves time, uniform marking, and then it is cost effective. And government has already created national testing agency. It was created in 2017. And now most of the major exams in the country are conducted online. Look at this IIT, GGC, NAT, NEET, GPAT, all are conducted. And yesterday it was in the paper that even in Delhi University, from this year, we are going to have admissions through this you know, CUCET, Combined Entrance Test. That will also be conducted by the National Testing Agency. So conduct of examination has also changed. And new education policy says that we need to transform the culture of assessment because you know, assessment drives learning the way you will assess your students your students will learn in that way this is a very important thing which i am telling we need to change the way questions are set learning you know is a six level hierarchy learning starts from remembering understanding application and goes up to creativity in our examination, generally we focus on the lower order thinking skills, remembering, understanding our application. Higher order thinking skills are missing. So that way teachers need to be trained for that. Assessment process needs to be made more scientific to encourage multiple skills of the students. That is why you know there is a crisis of creativity in India because our examination system is like that. If we will test rote learning, students will do rote learning. So we need to have questions which are based on concept, critical thinking, analytical thinking, and others, not on the speedy reproduction of information. One more thing where the digital transformation in chemistry has impacted is the way the teachers are trained. You know, you must have heard about CPDHE or IEEE. You know, here we used to train the teachers, but now technology is doing it. From academics of colleges, we have now come to online programs. And our center, you know, this ARPIT scheme has been launched by the government of India. ARPIT is annual refresher program in teaching. And Guru Angadev Teaching Learning Center at SGTB Khalsa College is the National Resource Center of Chemistry. We have prepared ARPIT programs in chemistry for the teachers of the country. So once they do that program, it's like a refresher course for them and it is done online. So, you know, I can show you in one minute how this is, this is the introductory video. So there is no sound in the video. Okay. 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 
I will leave it now. I will stop it. But this was just an introductory video about the Arpit program. And this became very popular. Thousands of the teachers could do it straight away online. They don't have to come to any college or something like that. So that is how the things have changed. Another change which has come with digital transformation is the new pedagogies, new method of teaching. This is a very important change which has come in chemistry education especially. You know, presently we teach by chalk and talk method. This method, although it has many advantages, but it is not without limitations. It is a teacher-centric approach. It presumes that all students learn in an identical fashion. It is mainly a monologue method. Teacher is always the speaking end. Then it is slow and time consuming. And many complex concepts you cannot explain on the board. For example, in stereochemistry, three-dimensional structure, sometimes it becomes difficult to visualize them and make them on the board. And then, Due to the paucity of time, you have to finish syllabus. You can't solve many problems in the class. So these are some of the limitations of talk and chalk method. And one more serious problem in our method of teaching is, which I feel from my experience, that our way of teaching does not encourage thinking, innovation, and creativity amongst our students. You know, this is a very, very serious drawback. Our focus is more on examination, rote learning, and scoring high marks. Look at this. This is the rat race for scoring 90 plus percentage marks. This is today's reality in chemistry. And I'm sure it must be the case in all subjects. Nobody wants to learn the concepts. Everybody wants to score 90 plus marks. A student's mark sheet has become a prestige sheet for the family, but a pressure sheet for the child. Very unfortunate. Keeping in view all this, these two chemistry teachers from the United States of America developed a flipped classroom model. This is a new approach. Here you know how it works. Flip here, a teacher will create a video lecture and then share it with the student. Student will watch the lecture at home and prepare questions for the teacher. What is two, three times, and then note down what you have not understood. And then at school, teacher will facilitate discussion with the students, answer students' queries. Students will ask questions and participate in the learning activities. So the role is changing. What earlier used to be the homework has become the classwork and what used to be the classwork has become the homework. So that is why it is called flipped teaching. <laughs> Look at this, you know why this is so popular. In the traditional model, remembering and understanding is done in the class because teacher is delivering the lecture. But higher order thinking skills, applying, analyzing, evaluating, and creating, they are left to the students to be imbibed at home, outside the class. But in the flipped model, remembering and understanding is done outside the class. They watch the video at home. And then higher order thinking skills are imbibed in the class. So this is becoming very, very popular all over the world. And this is possible because of the digital transformation. Now, this was my article about flip classroom for 21st century learning needs. It is in Education Times. This is my another article about this, how this is going to change the learning is done by the students. But for this, a lot of work needs to be done. And you know, this method is also called blended learning because it has online as well as face-to-face -face modes. And then, you know, lastly, I will come to 
virtual lab. So virtual lab is also a manifestation of the digital transformation in respect to practical curriculum. You know, you are going to study here CAM Collective V Labs. This is an initiative of National Science Digital Library Project under NMEICT. This is one project. There is one more project, virtual labs of the government of India. But both are basically virtual labs. You know, if you look at this, this is how a V lab works. There is a virtual lab and the interface is through an internet and remote users are connected. Anybody, if you have the internet, you can log into the virtual lab and perform. That is basically how a V lab will work. So again, you can see it is the technology which is helping you. Virtual lab, this is a project of Ministry of Human Resource Development. You know, in this, many institutions have joined hands. Look at the names are given here. They all have developed virtual labs for various subjects. And the broad areas for which virtual labs have been developed are, you can see almost all areas of science and engineering, including at the bottom last but one, you can see chemical science. And in Chem Collective V lab, that's also basically a simulation of a chemistry lab. It will help students learn basic laboratory techniques. These are available free of charge, less risky and more affordable than the real process. And then teachers can use it as a pre-lab exercise. No, you can perform it many times, learn it, and then ultimately you will have to do hands-on activity in the real mode. So that's basically the V-labs. Since your entire five days are going to be devoted to that, I won't spend much time on that. But one thing I will tell you, as it was mentioned earlier, there are various tutorials in Chem Collective Labs. For example, there is one tutorial on preparation of standard solution. Then how dilutions can be done and pH measurement. Then effect of temperature on solubility of salts acid-based titrations, you can take various acid bases and try. Then preparation of buffer solutions, how to prepare buffer solutions and how to get calculate their pH, etc. Then how you can calculate the heat of the reactions. This all comes in thermodynamics. Then how to determine equilibrium constant and how to determine solubility product and many more. So, these are the various tutorials for which V labs have been developed. You will learn how to download them and how to perform them. But the basic structure I have told you. Similarly, the other virtual lab which I told, here also we have you know, physical chemistry experiments. We have organic chemistry experiments like detection of functional groups, elements, separation of compounds, and then also for inorganic. So these are now becoming very, very popular. So ladies and gentlemen, you must have seen how digital transformation has changed the way chemistry education is imparted in the country. E-learning moves, I told you, virtual labs, then chemistry syllabi, then research through electronic databases, then assessment through online examination through National Testing Agency, then ERPIT program, and then ICT empowered pedagogy like flipped classroom. They are all showing the digital transformation in the imparting of chemistry education. The message is that ICT, if used creatively, can make a big difference in the way the teachers teach and the students learn. Look at this, how online education market in the country is developing. India has already become the second largest market for e-learning after the United States. In India, the online education market is forecasted to reach 11.6 billion US dollar by 2026. So 
there is going to be no looking back now. So, and you know, this has surge has occurred during this corona pandemic. And now it's going very fast. Already in India, we have about 3,500 educational technology startups which are there. It is now even said that India is very soon going to have a virtual university where everything will be online. So degrees will be given to you through online mode. And everything, teaching, learning, experiment, teaching, training, everything will be online. Already in Delhi, you must have read, already a virtual school has already come up. So we have already made a beginning in this direction. However, you know, so much has happened in digital transformation, but there are some drawbacks also. You know, you must, as a, in an individual, you must know what are the pros and cons. Drawbacks are, there is little or no face-to-face -face interaction. You may never meet the teacher or the instructor and other students. Highly impersonal, that is the best. For example, I am delivering this talk. We have never met. You have never seen me. Just that way it is highly impersonal. It's mainly a monologue, like one size fits all delivery. And therefore, sometimes, you know, it creates a sense of self-isolation. You feel isolated. Human touch is missing. Mm -hmm. Collaborative learning is missing, which is there in the real classroom. This report came that it has taken a toll on children who are sitting before laptop. And all subjects cannot be taught through online mode. And then also too much time before computers is very harmful. You know, these subjects like surgery, dental hygiene, these are difficult to teach in an online mode. And then there is also a lack of communication skill development in online students. This is a serious problem. Otherwise, I was reading in a newspaper that the habit of writing by hand is slowly disappearing amongst our students. Because they just put it on a, a computer keyboard or something like that. They don't write with the hand. And, you know, it affects the in-depth understanding and motor skills are getting affected. This is a serious drawback. And then so many institutions have started developing MOOCs. Who will ensure their quality? That's a question. So now there is a demand that some accrediting agency should be there who should grade the MOOCs or online courses so that you know that this MOOC is of A plus or E or B like that. And then in respect of online education, the most serious problem is of digital divide. You know, digital divide basically is a relatively, not a very new term. It was coined sometime in 2001. And Digital divide may be with respect to the access of device. You don't have the device. Then you have the device, but internet is not available. Or both are there, but you cannot afford it. Our climate, you are living in a place where because of the climatic conditions, internet is not worth. So this all may create digital divide. And this is becoming a serious thing. You know, world has a population of about 7.8 billion. Out of this, 4.4 billion are internet users in the world. So, and out of 4.4 billion, 600 million are in India. So, still there is a serious digital divide. Therefore, becoming or having online education throughout the country will take time because there are many people who can't access this. However, there is a report that by 2028, 100% of the world's population will have internet access. Government is also trying to enhance the reach of digital content. They are opening public digital libraries, subsidized internet plans, 
personal devices you know you must have seen they are being given laptops or ipad or even thinking of waiving of internet charges for the students that is one way it could be done and to enhance the reach of digital content mass media tv radio need to be used educational programs need to be available 24 by 7 and you know slowly all this will happen digital we are there is not going to be uh, going back so we have to go ahead and all efforts have to be made so that it becomes more and more spreading you know we also at our center we have been training teachers all over the country look at this was the report in education times that our center trained more than 45000 teachers during this corona pandemic so this is possible only because of online mode another serious problem in india is of internet speed we have internet speed of about 78 mbps whereas some of the leading countries of the world have very high maybe more than 25 mbps so we need to improve on that i just come to part 3 and i will take another i think 10 15 minutes and then i will finish it so i have told you how digital transformation has changed the way chemistry education is important and what are the drawbacks what are the challenges before us but now i will tell you about what is going to be the future of digital transformation in chemistry education because technology is changing every day technology in education is a journey and not a destination there was a time when there was no technology now we have got ict and in future we are going to have different technologies for example india is very soon going to enter an era of education 4.0 education 4.0 is total technology mediated education you know world is presently passing through industrial revolution 4 3 are already over one was based on steam other was based on electricity third was based on computing and now is the fourth industrial revolution based on disruptive technologies like artificial intelligence so industrial revolution 4 and education 4 is aligned with the industrial revolution 4 it has to fulfill the needs of the industrial revolution 4 these are going to be the technologies of the future artificial intelligence robotics virtual reality internet of things augmented reality data science gamification machine learning so you can very well imagine in the next 5 to 10 years even this current scenario will also change that is a next higher level of digital transformation which is going to take place and something more which is going to come is that is almost ultimate you know we had a chalk and talk method then came e learning and books then came blended learning flipped model and now we are going to have in future personalized learning learning as for your requirements this is the ultimate that will also happen in the years to come why there is a need of personalized learning because you know every learner is unique every learner has a different comprehension rate learning capacity method of gathering information so it varies from individual to individual so using learning analytics find out what are the strengths and weaknesses of an individual learner and then develop a curriculum for him or her so that will be called personalized learning so nobody would have thought that that would happen but that is now going to happen even gamification is going to come in a very big way but what is the use of gamification you must be thinking it is based on the theory that students will be more engaged with the learning process and attain greater success if learning is based on the gaming concepts what are the gaming concepts what are the concepts in any game competition incentive and goal attainment so there are already many e learning games which are available both for individuals and teams so gamification is going to come 
artificial intelligence i have already talked to you artificial intelligence is going to come in examination in a very big way online examination will also change machine set question paper algorithms will replace mentors exams will be tomorrow at your door steps digital invigilation will replace physical invigilation and digital attendance this was a report which came that exams made tomorrow move to your bedroom but the invigilator would still be watching because there is an artificial intelligence proctor which will keep a watch on your every movement and ensure that the right person is appearing in the examination just to make nobody would have thought that such things can happen but this is all possible through the next level of digital transformation so please remember education in future is going to be an amalgamation of the transformations driven by education 4.0 national education policy 2020 present pandemic emerging student needs and new technologies all taken together will lead to the new education scenario in the country and with this i come to part four that the roles of the teachers are also going to change when so much is happening teachers do have to change look at this teachers ultimately the most pivot of education system and you know it's very rightly said that an institution is ultimately as good as its faculty so roles are going to change in the 21st century these are going to be the new roles many of you who want to become teachers be prepared for all these you have to become tech savvy teachers in ict skills tomorrow you may have to manage virtual classroom and discussion forum because if students are enrolled in moocs and if they have some questions who will answer them it is the teacher only so you must learn how to manage a virtual classroom or manage a virtual discussion forum teachers will become coaches and mentors rather than mere knowledge providers and moocs are also developed by the teachers only so you have to you know my feeling is that as young students you should have excellent writing skills because we noted that sometimes we lack in writing skill so uh, if you are good in writing skill it can help you in the development of moocs so these are the new roles of the teachers and now i come to the last part when so much is happening on the technology front you can very well imagine virtual lab is just a very small portion i have given you an overview so in such a scenario then how should you excel i would like to just in 5 minutes i would like to give some tips although it is one full lecture which i want i i give but here i will just summarize it that how you can excel some tips for students as well as teachers because you know i feel that you can always learn from the mistakes and experience of others because we may not live long enough to make all mistakes on our own so that's basically the thing here and why it's also for teacher because a teacher is also after all a student the difference is that when one teaches two learn student as well as the teacher both learn and in excelling in your career this is my personal feeling nothing to do with this digital transformation you should have excellent competence competency in life will be in three things skill knowledge and ability that means value trait motivation personality part so you should have all that the problem is that skills and knowledge are available are visible to you but values traits and motives are never visible to us only when we deal with the person you come to know the person's personality you know it is said that there is an iceberg model for competency that means one tenth above nine tenth below knowledge and skills are known from bio data you can see but what type of a person he or she is attitude traits thinking style self image 
All this is unknown. So that's basically hidden. Nine tenth is hidden. So it's something like that, invisible. And personality governs all that. You know, it is said that for success in life, personality plays a very, very important role. Besides your competence, I mean, in the sense of knowledge and skills. You know, there is a report that 87% of all people fail in life, not because of capability, but because of personality. Therefore, you know, when we were young students, nobody told us these things. Therefore, I thought I will share some of these things for you because most of you are still in those formative years where you can mold your personality. Because, you know, it said that realization comes to everybody in one's life, but generally by the time realization comes, it's too late. But that will not happen with you. Personality is who we are and what we do when everybody is watching. Character is who we are and what we do when nobody is watching. Personality is outward manifestation. Character is deep in being. The most important thing for success, especially for the students, is always believe in yourself. To succeed, you must believe that you can. Look at the quote. A bird sitting on a tree is never afraid of the branch breaking because her trust is not in the branch but in her own wings. That type of confidence you should have in yourself. For students especially, always have an immediate as well as distant aims. Generally, students make a mistake. They are more concerned about their distant aim and in the process, they forget their immediate aim. And then they are not able to achieve anything. You know, this is a very good quote. dur dekhne ki chahat mein Bahut kuch paas se guzar jata hai. Whatsoever line you choose, excel in that. A penguin can never be a giraffe. So try to be the best penguin you can be. Have always positive thinking. Attitude plays a very important role. Positive thinkers have a solution for every problem. And negative thinkers have a problem for every solution. Stay positive. A negative mind will never give you a positive life. Please keep it in mind. Never. It will never give you. For students especially, you know, when I was a student, I also learned these things much later. Read less, think more. Many people are reading big, big books, foreign author's book. No use. Thinking is important why this is happening, why this is happening. Logical approach. Try to get a clarity of concepts. You are all in chemistry. With chemistry, tomorrow you may go to any profession, but clarity will help you every day. Try to get an in-depth understanding of the topics through solving problems. When you solve more and more problems, you get more and more in-depth understanding. Do this. Then, Introspect regularly from time to time. Nobody knows you better than you yourself. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? What are the opportunities? What are the threats? Only you know. Do introspection regularly. How things are changing. Because nobody else will do it for you. Make it a habit. If you don't get the best in life, make the best of what you get. Excel in whatsoever you do. You know, every line needs top people. Tell me which is the line where top people are not respected. You are in teaching, become a great teacher. You are in research, excellent researcher. Administration, excellent administrator. Every line needs top people. You should be very confident and honest to yourself. You don't need to proclaim to the world that you are very honest. No, nobody bothers. If you want to become extraordinary, try to be having extraordinary questions. Don't be like one in the crowd. Mediocrity won't survive in the, the years to come. Just to be different. Work with a strong willpower and bulldog determination. And I tell you, world will be at your feet.
some people are very sensitive if somebody says something they get you know very much nervous or confused or very sad sticks and stones are thrown only at fruit bearing trees never bother don't worry keep working you know this was a note which was written in my room in my department you can't change the past but you can ruin present by worrying about future and then try to have proactive personality proactive people prepare reactive people react to the problem proactive people don't wait for the shit to come to them they swim out to that that is the proactive personality trait self belief growth mindset work hard many you know many students i know in my career you know i have taught at college level university level different universities abroad they work very hard but without any in respect of working hard direction is more important than speed so choose your direction carefully and self discipline is something which you should have self discipline means mastery over what you think if you can control that you can control anything this is a big big challenge because there is nothing in this world that can trouble you more than your own thoughts cages are not made of iron they are made of thoughts remember that then many of young people come in comfort zone you will have to come out of the comfort zone only then life will transform worry overcome you know it's very easy to say you will say but worry is a misuse of imagination we suffer more in imagination than in reality then you know anger also anger is a normal emotion but we should control and never say something out of anger because those can words can scare a person for life arrogance arrogance is opposite to confidence so uh, the basis of confidence is self belief and the basis of arrogance is uh, ego don't let it go sometimes a small success goes into a person's head no oh. you know this is a very good quote kabhi kisi cheez ka ghamand aa jaye to shamshan ka ek chakkar laga na tumse behtareen log raakh bane pade remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return and i think the most important thing for student is manage your time remember today is the tomorrow you worried about yesterday time management is life i think the sooner you realize it the better it is everybody gets 24 hours a day so if you are 20 year old everybody of 20 year old will have got the same time so there is only one thing more precious than our time and that is who we spend it on time is the cost time is the coin of your life it is the only coin you have and only you can determine how it will be spent be careful less you know, let other people spend it for you now i like this quote bandhi hai haath par sabse ghadiya magar pakad mein kisi ke ek lamha bhi nahi live in the moment this is another don't live for too fast don't think too much you know we don't know how the things will change every day is once in a lifetime try to be a good person you know i read it somewhere and i therefore took this khoobsurat chehra bhi boodha ho jata hai pad bhi ek din khatm ho jata hai jism bhi ek din dhal jata hai lekin ek dil ka acha insaan hamesha acha insaan hi rehta hai be a good person but don't waste time to prove it no matter what happens in life be good to people being good to people is a wonderful legacy to leave them. so ultimately ladies and gentlemen your performance is equal to your potential minus interference keep interference that means the negative thoughts minimum that will enhance your performance and it would be wrong if i say that at the end of the day your real competition is you only 
conquer yourself rather than conquering the world. You don't have the problem. You are the problem. You know, this is a very, if you do a thinking, this can change your life. Sometimes, but generally people don't bother, they say, what we can say, the upper part. Maybe a quote has, work bhi tu hai, narc bhi tu hai. In dono ka, work bhi tu hai. Jindagi choti nahin hoti hai, log jina hi deri se shuru karte hai. जब तक रास्ते समझ में आते हैं तब तक लौटने का वक्त हो जाता है डिजिटल ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन इज जस्ट वेरी स्मॉल ऑफ लाइफ माई ओन एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ लाइफ विच आई है This is about our chemistry program. This is about my editorial on e-learning. This is end of talk and talk with me in Times of India. This is in Hindi Times. This is my article about why the Indian education system must focus on innovating its teaching approach. This is using ICT creatively in our education. So, all these are going to be big challenges for us. so challenges keep us fresh you know there is a very famous quote a ship is safe in harbor but that's not what ships are built for humans are not designed to be happy in status quo so continue to remain dissatisfied with your life so that you can get better that's the message which i want to give challenges are what keep us fresh this is a good principle to have in work as well as in life and you know in teaching i don't take every challenge as a problem take every problem as a challenge embrace the challenge in your life as an opportunity for self transformation and this is my last two slides you know i was recently reading a book that was die empty This was written by Todd Henry. Once Todd Henry was asked, "What motivated you to write this book?" He says that I was attending a business meeting where the director asked, "Which is the richest land in the world?" One said, "Oil-rich Gulf states." Other said, "Diamond mines in Africa." Then the director said, "No, it is the cemetery. It is the burial ground." which is the richest land in the world because millions of people have died or departed and they carried many valuable ideas that did not come to light and they are buried there with them that is the richest land in the world from there he got this idea and wrote this book die empty so his message is live full die Don't die old, die empty. That's the goal of life. life. Go to the cemetery and disappoint the graveyard. No one has ever become poor by giving. So give all what you have to the world. That's what I want to say. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure, and I know I took a little more time, but uh, it's a very rare opportunity to address young students. You know, we have been mostly addressing teachers. Faculty development programs are very common. but student development programs are very rare i think they need more such programs so you are welcome to give your feedback my cell number is here my email id is there please share and all the best for this student development program i'm sure we have very eminent resource persons who are going to deliver talks on various aspects of chem collective v labs and you will benefit a lot but in that don't forget the overall view of the life overall digital transformation every aspect is changed thank you very much all the best thank you so much sir there are one or two questions there uh, if you permit we can ask sure sir there is a question from dr anuradha she wanted to know how can we improve the quality of digital education 
especially let us know the good assessment practices required to access online education <clears throat> see online education process when i say you know for example i am also delivering a talk online mode then online education maybe with the help of e learning or moocs but most important is the content part i remember when we were developing moocs for our students we have developed moocs for msc chemistry students so there one mooc corresponds to one semester paper we take the semester paper syllabus divide it into 35 to 40 parts and for each part of the syllabus we develop e content once e content is developed for one part we call it one module ultimately there will be total of 35 to 40 modules now you know people anybody can do that but the question is in one module how you write how you develop the content that will determine the quality of the mooc how good a teacher you are whether you have the ability to come down to the level of the weakest student that is very important it's not that you just develop an online e learning matter or a mooc and that will serve the quality will change with the quality of the content this is very very important that is why it is said that it is a big challenge to develop one quality mooc do you know which is the most popular mooc in the world one of the most popular mooc in the world is how to learn it has been done i think it is by coursera so they have all become very very popular moocs because a lot of efforts have gone and please remember if you want to be a good teacher in online you have to be a good teacher in offline mode and a good teacher is one who has a full command over the subject his teaching should reflect the amount of thinking you have done on the subject it's not that you just read the book and pass down the information no you should have done a lot of thinking and all this is reflected when you develop a mooc also so that is and in assessment part the second question which the person has asked is no assessment is a big challenge for us you know we have not been trained to set questions to test higher order thinking skills we generally test question of lower order thinking skill and in lower order thinking skill it is the knowledge remembering part then understanding to some extent and then application beyond that we have not been trained that is why you know we have a problem in our education system and perhaps many young students will be knowing there is a crisis of creativity in indian education system look at the fact no indian scientist working in india has been able to get a nobel prize after 19 i think almost 70 years have passed 29 or 30 when c v raman got after c v raman nobody has got the nobel prize in science while working in it so that shows that there is a dearth of creative minds in india we need to train for that and assessment can contribute in that okay any other thank you so much sir thank you very much it is uh, for your inspiring and motivating words of wisdom and uh, i'm sure our students will now uh, go to the virtual labs e moocs and e learning which is actually the need of the hour today in covid pandemic it is very essential to learn through the e learning so i think they must go they will try to search it out and they will be benefited by it and it is always pleasure to listen you sir either in the class thank or in you. the lecture thank you so much sir for thank giving you your precious for time. inviting me thank you thank you very much thank you sir over to you ram sunil ma'am
Yeah, uh, thank you. So, Ma'am, are we going to have recorded lectures? We'll, we'll keep Just it on wait. the website. Don't worry. So, I hope I'm audible. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, now again, I would request Dr. Gitanjali to go for the introduction of our second speaker. She has already arrived. So, please go ahead with that. And meanwhile, yeah, before that, uh, uh, I think in the chat box uh, that uh, yes, Arihan. So Arihan has given that uh, link for uh, for the feedback for session one. So all of you please fill up that form, and then we'll we'll proceed for the session two. So meanwhile, Dr. Gitanjali, please go ahead with the session two. So welcome. Mrs. Chetra H. Gaudi. She is the training manager for today's SDP. She is MBA Finance Market Research from Sikkim Manipal University, Bangalore. She worked as training manager in Yes Bank for three years and as senior training manager in Standard Chartered Bank, India. She is a keynote speaker in various events organized by various universities like Reva University, Karnataka, National Institute of Engineering, Mysore, Currently, she is working as a senior training manager in the Spoken Tutorial Project Ministry of Education, Government of India, IIT Bombay, since January 2009 till date. Now, what is Spoken Tutorial Project? This is an initiative of the Talk to a Teacher Project of the National Mission on Education through ICT, launched by Ministry of Education, Government of India. And during COVID-19 pandemic, Mrs. Chetra has trained more than two lakh faculty as well as students across the country to acquire valuable skill. So I welcome Dr. Chet uh, Mrs. Chetra to enlighten our students through her experience. Thank you so much. Please welcome. Over to you, Chetra. Am I audible? Yeah, you are. Okay. A very warm welcome and good afternoon to all. Myself, Chaitra Gavde from IIT Bombay. First and foremost, I wish to appreciate the entire organizing committee of Department of Chemistry, Kirorimal College, University of Delhi, that is DBT Star College scheme, for their initiative in and dedication efforts in taking uh, this program and giving such a wonderful platform for the benefit of students. So I will give a small introduction about our program. Spoken Tutorial Project IIT Bombay program is a national mission on education through ICT, Ministry of Education, Government of India. IIT Bombay is a Google award winning MOOCs program for IT training. We are running a successful IT training programs in last 11 years, that is from uh, 2010. Till date, we have trained more than 60 lakh students and teachers across India. Uh, in schools, UG, PG, Polytechnic, Engineering, ITI, etc. By doing this program, we guarantee by, uh, you that you will be obtaining a mastery through self-learning. Because this program is mainly focused on self-learning, so guarantee you will be doing a mastery by doing this training program. So there are main two purposes. That is, first is ICT skills focus to upgrade the optimacy of teachers and academic focus for improving quality of virtual teaching. This program is flexible learning and at, available at very low cost. There is no fixed timing for doing the training. You can do this training in your own free time. And this is available at very low cost if you compare it to other programs. And this also fulfill the requirement of ICT offline MOOCs courses. So this is a plus point for all students. Now exactly what Spoken Tutorial program is. Spoken Tutorial is an audio video tool. So that teaches the open source software. Through active learning methods, students learn a software in short and simple steps. 
they can replicate the instructions, build and run their own program codes. You can pause the video at any time. You can go back, watch the video again and again. You can build your own uh, program and run your program codes. What are the advantages of doing this training program? This is a skill oriented. Hello, ma'am. Right? Yes. Sorry to interrupt, but your screen is not visible. My screen is not visible. Ma'am. Yes, visible, ma'am. Ma'am, it is not visible. Ma'am, not, not visible, ma'am. Ma it's blinking, ma'am. Not visible, ma'am. Okay, is it uh, visible now? Yes, yes ma'am. It is now yes, visible. Ma'am, it's visible, ma'am. Thank you. So uh, I was in page like what spoken tutorial program is. So um, the advantages of doing this program, this is a skill oriented certified training program uh, for basically you are all from chemistry and biochemistry department. So the courses which will benefit you is Avogadro, GCAM Paint, Cell Designer, GMOL Applications and many more are there. So spoken tutorial ensure the practical experimentation. Like you all will be learning uh, the the course which is there in the syllabus but doing this program will ensure you to do the practical experiment which is very important and the spoken tutorial will fulfill the lab requirements from home you don't need to come to college to do this program and offline in self-learning method once you download the course material everything is offline internet is not required and it can be done in a self-paced manner I will give you a short demo, how to start the program, how to download the CD content. Is the screen uh, spoken tutorial page is visible? No, ma'am. Yes, no, ma'am. Ma uh, PPT. No, no ma'am. PPT is there, okay. Now it's visible, ma'am. Okay, fine. Yes, so ma'am. Now it's visible. Thank you. So this is our website uh, that is spoken-tutorial.org. Every student must have received their username and password. Username will be their email ID, which they gave for registration. And password you have to create by own by following the steps which I had uh, shared in the WhatsApp. So this is our uh, website. Here you have to click on software training. And then you have to click on individual learning workshop. So once you come to this page, there will be three options. No need to filter anything which is there above. Uh, you have to just go to this option. So there are three options. One is ongoing event, one is past event, and one is my event. Please click on my event option. There is an option to download CD content. Once you click on download CD content, uh, your course material will be downloaded. So I have already downloaded it. Once you click on download, the course material will be in zip file. So it is very important to extract it. If you don't extract, then you won't be able to watch the videos. So once you download, the first step is to extract. There is an option like extract all where the zip file be, will be extracted. I have already extracted it. This shows over here has download. So once I click on download, there will be a folder named spoken. And this everything will be done in offline once you download. After clicking on spoken, you will find total four folders. So you have to click on index.html file to watch your uh, videos to start the training. So once I click on index, it will take me to the Google Chrome page. Once you come to home page, by default, there will be three videos. So you must watch the three videos first. One explains you how, what is side-by-side -side method. Like you will be watching the video. Also, you have to practice side-by-side. -side. So how you will be doing that is explained in the first video. Second is about forum. Suppose while doing the training, if you have any doubt, any question in your mind, so you can go and ask in forum where you will get a reply between 24 to 48 hours. So by watching this video, you will come to know how where to go uh, to the forum, how to ask the question. 
and the last video will be about assignments that is supplementary material in each video which you will be watching there will be one assignment this is uh, uh, the self assignment you have to submit it uh, to the ma'am so she will be sharing with you soon where to submit and whom to submit so this third video is all about assignment once you finish watching all these three videos please uh, find you will find one option has select false category so you have to click on the select false category where you will find chem collective virtual lab option so you have to click on this select your language that is english and click on submit so you will be able to see all the videos that is up to 14 videos are available so you will be able to see all the videos and you can learn like you can click on each video and the training will start video will start so just for a demo purpose i am uh, clicking on one video ma'am your screen is not changing we can just see the folder yes ma'am okay so the website is not there like yes ma'am <laughs> now we can see ma now you can see okay so uh, you were able to see till the extract file which i had explained yes ma'am yes, ma now we yes, can see okay so once you uh, click on the extracted file named has spoken you will find one folder has index.html after clicking on index.html you will uh, get all this videos that is 14 videos which you are able to see on the screen now you have to click on one video means you can click on the video and training will start so just for a demo purpose i am try uh, opening one video ma'am there is no option in my pc for selecting chems select words were left ah so i didn't got you there is no option of selecting chem collective words were left Mm-hmm. Okay. There is now no option for you to select the Chem Collective Virtual Lab. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, only mm, the two videos will three come. Three videos. Are... Okay. You are able to see only the three videos which were there in the home page. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Me, me also. Ma'am, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Same is happening. Facing same problem. If you are facing same problem, then please try to open that from Google Chrome. Are you trying to open it from Google Chrome? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Google Chrome. Yes, ma'am. Okay, and the extraction part is also done, right? Before opening the yes, HTML. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Okay, no problem. Ah, uh, try to delete that which you have downloaded, and again, please try to ah uh, download it and then extract the file. Even if you are facing same problem, then please let me know. So I will down the downloaded file which I have. I will share that from the Google Drive so that you can start your training. Yes, ma'am. Okay, ma'am, done. But uh, uh, it is starting. Uh, ma'am, starting. I was showing on the video. Par, par okay. Okay. Fine. No problem. Then I will be sharing you the Google Drive link of this video which I have. So you can open it and you can start your training. Meanwhile, I will just check with my team like what the problem is. And yeah. So once you click on any one video. You will find the option as assignment for each video. So you can do your assignment once you complete your training. A few students are going to watch this from their mobile, so I have to clear that. One, you can watch the videos from your mobile. The only thing is you won't be able to practice side by side because to practice side by side, computer or PC is needed. So I will also show you like how to watch the videos from mobile. Mrs. Chetra, please uh, show that video, uh, any video of, or maybe the first one to students so that they can know that how to perform side by side and uh, see that. What do you you do it do for them so that they can come to know that what will what is going to happen next? Uh, Ma'am, even like if I share the video through Zoom, they won't be able to hear it. that's the problem 
okay so the both of them cannot be run uh, simultaneously on the same system right so if i on the video even in zoom so students won't be able to hear it okay okay then please proceed they will check yeah sure so i'm uh, going to share the screen from my mobile like how to watch the videos from mobile Uh, where is the option to stop sharing the screen from my uh, computer, which I'm doing? Uh. Yeah, it is there on your on your uh, screen. On you. Please just check it. It's recording. There is just beside chat. There is a button share screen. Beside chat and uh, raise hand. In between chat and raise hand. Is it visible? Yeah, I have to stop sharing it, which uh, yeah. is good. Yeah, please, please. Please. <laughs> Maybe you can leave the meeting and join again. In that case, it will definitely work. Yes, Manan, you are right. When you are saying extracting is for making it accessible offline, you are right. Uh, hello, are you able to see the screen which I am sharing through my mobile? No, no, that is, that is no ma'am. No, ma'am, it's not visible. No, ma'am. <laughs> no, ma'am. Is it visible now? No, no ma'am. No, ma'am, not, not yet, ma'am. Now it's visible. Yes, ma'am, we can see now. Okay, so here I have downloaded the CD content, which you can see that is in a zip file. So first I have to extract this. That is decompress file. So once I extract, you will get a folder that is name spoken. 
and then because you are watching this from mobile you should not click on index or html but you have to click on videos option so once you click on videos option there will be three videos by default which shows you how to ask the question in forum how to do side by side practice and all Now your screen is visible, ma'am. Yeah. Yes, sir. So, uh, yeah. So. Okay. Yes, sir. So that's what that's it about spoken tutorial as a project. So I hope you all enjoy this uh, training program. Learn a lot from this, and. Uh, I wish you all give your hundred percent participation. Any doubts? We are there in the WhatsApp group. You can ask uh, with me or ma'am, sir. So that's it. Thank you so much. Uh, let's see so, the questions. If any student is having. Yeah, sure, sir. Uh, ma'am, uh, if possible, please share the Google Drive link so that we can download it from Drive as well. Okay. If possible, sure, sure. I will do that. Thank Definitely, you. I will do that. Yeah. Please share in that our uh, WhatsApp group. Sure. Yeah. That is sure. Any other question? So, ma'am, we have to learn all this ourselves. We have to watch the videos, do the assignments, and how to submit them. Assignments, it will be uh, in a text format. So, you have to run whatever in assignment they have asked you. You have to run that. Uh, I don't know what to say in your program uh, language, like program codes and all, and then you can submit it to uh, ma'am. Maybe Kirori Mal ma'am, sorry, uh, Tina ma'am will be taking care of this. Okay, ma'am. Right, ma'am. Bye. Ma'am, we have to submit it physically? Uh, no, not needed. You can submit it through online, like maybe it is through mail or WhatsApp. Okay, ma'am. Any other questions? And basically, we will uh, do the experiment and record it and then submit it. Correct. Uh, you have to uh, perform whatever is given in the assignment. You can record it. You can also do perform it. And then you have to submit. It can also okay. be in a word format or presentation, a small PPT type. Anything is fine. Okay. Uh, Regarding assignment, we will be telling you, don't worry about that. Yes. Okay, ma'am. Ma'am, today I haven't received link for this class. Okay. Ma yes, ma'am, me also. Ma'am, I got yesterday. Some... Wait, wait. Uh, everyone, please listen to me. Yesterday, right, I sent mail to each one of you. Just check your mail. Mail carries the entire detail. And those who did not enter, please check your mail for the WhatsApp group. Any other query? <laughs> Google has told you check spam spam mode part also. Thank you. Thank you, Madam.
any other questions? Our training will be started tomorrow. Uh, like it because there is no fixed time for this training. You can start your first and second video, which is only about introduction. It is an introduction part about the program. You can do it by yourself. So today you can go with your first and second video. And from tomorrow, uh, ma'am will be sharing your schedule of the program. So you have to follow that. Maybe okay, alternative days, uh, you will be having some training. So you have to follow that. Fine, ma'am. Thank you. Dr. Saswit, please go ahead. Thank you. Okay, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, good evening to everyone. Uh, so before we formally thank Mrs. Shetra, uh, I don't think there's any, any other question in the chat box. Uh, still, if someone has any question, he or she can ask finally, and then we can go ahead. So I guess there are no more questions. We thank uh, Mrs. Chatra for her valuable time and effort to actually give uh, a very, very vital information to all the students. And as we know from last two years, owing to these prevailing very tough uh, corona conditions, a lot of students they have been hampered to inside to move inside the lab. And uh, as we know, there are many students as well, those who would be graduating without uh, entering inside the lab and doing any practical practicals. So in these conditions, these types of courses or these types of practical virtual experiences of the labs would come as a blessing in disguise. And I would say that uh, if the students will go thoroughly through these videos and perform the given assignments and the quizzes, at least they would be knowing uh, the the challenges that are there in the practicals. Uh, although I I fully agree that uh, there are no compensations with the with the real practical chemistry that we do in the inside the lab, but but actually to get a glimpse in these conditions that what are the things that we do inside the lab, and that will be very helpful to the students. And these courses would definitely add uh, more feathers in the ground. Because so later down the lane, somewhere they will they will have the advantages of doing these courses either in the form of a certificate. So I would rather say just they will increase their knowledge. So uh, we we thank uh, Mrs. Chetra for uh, her time and effort, and uh, we are looking forward to next five days for these uh, training sessions. And over to you, Ram Sunil sir. We would be starting tomorrow with the lecture. Uh, yeah, sir? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, 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 bar, uh, I would like to think that we have carried out. So, with this, I thank everyone for their participation. And uh, we'll, we have uh, finally started. So, you can start your session, you can start your activity right from today also. And we'll go step by step, complete all the tasks that is assigned to you. And uh, surely we'll learn so many things in this short span of time. So with this, I thank everyone. Stay connected through your WhatsApp group that is officially uh, made for this. Just a by I would like to think. make one so statement. That, I thank everyone. So we'll meet tomorrow with, with uh, similar schedule. Sir, uh, sir, 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 now we can end the meeting. Mr. Ramsunil, wait just a minute. I want to talk to students has... for a minute. Uh, tomorrow, there are few we modules. Might please fill the forms as well. Please fill the forms as well. Am I audible to everyone? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Ma you, yes, ma you are audible, ma'am. Yeah. Tomorrow, uh, she will answer all the queries and whatever you want to ask, you can ask. Ma'am, please repeat.
किरण मैम एक एक बार रिपीट कर देंगे आपका आवाज शायद बीच में कट गया मैम वॉइस इज क्रैकिंग इसका हमें शायद है पता पता होना ना कौन सा रंग ले कैन यू रिपीट अगेन ओके आई एम जस्ट सेइंग दैट देयर आर सर्टेन मॉड्यूल्स व्हिच आर शेड्यूल्ड इन योर uh schedule uh, which have been mailed to you there are certain modules which you have to watch tomorrow after watching the, those modules you you will be having a lecture with a speaker she will be solving all the problems related to those so you can ask your queries with the with our speaker and then we will give you an assignment based on that is it clear Yes, ma'am. You have to watch okay. today's videos yes, also. You have to watch the scheduled videos which have been given to you. So, ma'am, they will be. They would be emailed uh, tomorrow. Modules are already. Uh, Mrs. Chetra told you how to watch them, na? No? Yes, ma'am. She has uh, already explained you. But... Don't you know? Which module you have to watch to for tomorrow? Mridal, Mridal. We will post the schedule. Three videos. I didn't Sir, get my schedule. Sir will be posting that schedule in the group. Okay. Just okay. hold on a second, everyone. See tomorrow. I mean, what uh, Chetra has told us that for all those students who could not get, could not download that schedule, that the, all the fourteen modules for them it will be shared via. Your Google Drive. So just stay back. Don't worry. You will get all the details. Okay. And still, you just try to open it through your browser, whatever you are using. Try to get that on your own. Re just just watch the videos and try to solve the problems. And tomorrow our uh, speaker will come and try to solve whatever queries you do have. Okay. So this is how we are going to carry it out. Yes, sir, one, one you more. will be watching module number one and yeah. two today, and three, three to five tomorrow. Yeah. Yes, yes. Is it clear to everyone? You will be watching module number one and two today, three to five tomorrow. Tomorrow, the speaker will discuss about the problems related to those modules, and the assignment will be based on those modules only. अब आप में से कोई सेवन और एट वॉच करेगा तो उसकी असाइनमेंट नहीं मिलेगी कल उसकी असाइनमेंट आपको थ्री टू फाइव की मिलेगी इज इट क्लियर वो करनी है ना मतलब आज आपको वन और टू की करनी है कल आपको थ्री टू फाइव करनी है आपकी जो प्रॉब्लम जो नोट नोट डाउन आपके पास टाइम की लिबर्टी है यू वेन एवर यू वॉन्ट टू वॉच यू कैन वॉच एट दैट टाइम बट जो शेड्यूल टाइम है उस टाइम पर हमारे स्पीकर्स होंगे उस टाइम पर आपको हमारे साथ बैठना है जूम पे द टाइम इज थ्री थ्री ओ क्लॉक तो थ्री ओ क्लॉक यू विल बी सिटिंग विद अस ऑन जूम इज इट क्लियर मैम यस सॉरी थ्री ओ थ्री टू फोर इज अ टाइम फॉर वॉचिंग दिस एंड फोर ओ क्लॉक द स्पीकर विल कम आई एम सो सॉरी फोर ओ क्लॉक द स्पीकर विल कम फाइव ओ क्लॉक वी विल गिव यू द असाइनमेंट and by 6 you have to submit the assignment is it clear now we are posting the schedule just now sir will be posting in the group clear ma'am clear yes ma'am clear theek hai theek hai so up to okay. five modules tomorrow by 4 o'clock you should watch up to five modules okay then okay then see you tomorrow all the best okay, okay ma'am thank you okay bye bye thank you sir yeah. thank you thank sir. you ma'am thank you sir thank you sir and thank you ma'am